Hi there everybody, Luke Mahelsik here, Product Marketing Manager for Blue Ridge Numerics CF Design. And what I'd like to share with you today are the benefits of digital prototyping in a flow and thermal world. I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your schedule today to watch today's webinar. And our focus today is going to be on how to gain and apply more product performance knowledge before visiting the lab to do your physical testing. Specifically today, we're going to leverage Autodesk Inventor and CF Design to do some digital prototyping. Before we get started, I'd like to share some implications of digital prototyping with CF Design. Let's talk about the time and money that can be saved when you choose to do digital prototyping. A poll of CF Design customers showed that on average 40 days was needed and over $27,000 to do all of a company's physical testing and prototyping for a single project. After these companies implemented CF Design, they were only spending 12 days and a little over $9,300 on average. That's a 70% improvement in time and a 65% improvement in cost. So if we take six moderately complex projects that you do per year, you could save over $107,000 annually. And that $107,000 includes the cost of the CF Design software. Innovation and quality are also affected when you implement digital prototyping with CF Design. CF Design allows for more insight over a range of designs allowing greater quality products. Low cost, time efficient digital prototypes allow for greater innovation in the design process. It's time to see now perhaps what you've been missing from your product development. I'd like to perform a CAD driven flow and thermal design study of an automotive headlamp. I'm going to share with you some tools that are going to assess multiple designs and look at the performance of those designs to create a higher quality, more innovative product while saving time and money over physical testing. So let's get to the demonstration. What I have here is an automotive LED headlamp that I need to understand the flow and thermal performance of. This is my baseline or my original design. One of the first ways CF Design saves you time and money over physical prototyping is the ability to leverage your native Inventor geometry. I'm going to start my design study right inside of Inventor. Our design study manager is our connection from Inventor to CF Design. Once inside of CF Design, some built-in intelligence automatically applies my material properties for me. If I want to change material, I can simply right-click on that component and edit. I can choose a brand new material from our existing database, or you can create your own custom material. Once our materials are done, we can move on to boundary conditions or the environment that you want to simulate. This is a closed system with natural convection, so I'm simply going to apply some heat generation to my components. Again, with that simple right click, I can edit or see the existing wattages applied to my components. Once I'm done with my boundary conditions and my materials, I can then simulate this model and begin to gather my results. One of the first things I want to do is just look at the overall temperature distribution and see what it looks like in the system. I can clearly see the hot spots, the cold spots. I can see that my heat sink and my LED array are quite hot, right about 115 degrees C. I can begin to use additional tools like cut planes to really dig into the model. In this case, I'm using a plane showing the temperature at all my locations through the system. Cut planes allow us to gather information 
anywhere in the system. I can reorient these planes. I can move them dynamically through my system and really get an idea of where my hot spots are, where my cold spots are. One of the other things we can do with this plane is we can probe it. Where you might put a handful of thermal couples in one of your physical prototypes, we can monitor any location in the entire system. If you look in the lower left hand corner of my screen, wherever I move my mouse, I'm probing the temperature at that particular location. Another way to look at this model is with a cut plane, but looking at the velocity in the system. What this allows me to do is see areas of recirculation, dead zones, high velocity, low velocity, the vectors indicating the direction of that flow. I can clearly see where I have these recirculation zones in the front of my design, the back of the design, but I can see that I have very little flow passing through the veins of the heat sink. All my errors are blue, indicating it's a low velocity. Now that I've gathered my qualitative information, I want to gather some quantitative information. I have four LEDs in particular that I want to pay attention to to see if they exceed my 75 degree reference spec. And I can see in all four cases they're all being exceeded. One of the other tools we can use is what's called a summary point. This one happens to be right in the middle of the veins of one of the heat sink. And what I can do is plot that and see what the velocity is and the temperature at that particular location. In this case, you can see I have about 32 millimeters per second passing through the van of that heat sink. I know that that's a low value and I need to improve that. And I can also see that my 80 degree reference temperature for my heat sink is being exceeded. The last thing I want to look at is the range of temperature across the face of my LEDs. I can use a tool called XY plot to gather that information. When I plot across the face of those LEDs, I can see what my temperature spread is from the furthest left to the furthest right LED. Once I've gathered all of this information from my baseline design, I can now make a more informed design decision about how to make my second and my final design perform better than this one. The tool I'm going to use next is called a clone. Once I clone a design, that allows me to take all of the settings from this original design and put those into a second design, reducing the amount of time to set up and simulate my subsequent models. Once my model's been cloned, I can simply go back into Inventor and make my design change. My design change in this case is going to be to vent my heat sink from top to bottom, forcing the flow through those veins. Leveraging an eye assembly, I can make that change. I'm going to go back to my design study manager now. In this case, I'm going to update that final design. What I have now are three designs, my original, my final, and an intermediate design. What you see on the screen now is an ISO surface of the velocity and temperature of all three designs side by side. My final design on the left, my original in the lower right, and my intermediate in the upper right. I can clearly see side by side how all three of these perform. My final design has far higher velocity passing through the heat sink, lower temperatures, and better overall performance of the system. Once I look at the qualitative aspects of my three designs, I can now look at the quantitative information also of those three designs. If I look at those summary parts, those four important LEDs on each side of my spread, I can now plot these 
across all three designs and see how they perform. In this case, I can see my original and my intermediate design fail that 75 degree reference temperature and my final design in all four LED cases passes. Very easy, very clear pass-fail information. I can also look at the flow performance passing through that heat sink to see if it's doing what I want it to do this time. Again, I can plot that information across a range of designs. And I can clearly see that I'm almost tripling the velocity passing through the veins of that heat sink. The higher velocity subsequently reducing the temperature. That 80 degree reference temperature is clearly met with my new design. And the last thing I want to check is the spread across the face of my LEDs. I can go to my XY plot and see how they perform. I can very easily see the temperature for my original, my intermediate, and my final design. What I'd like to do now is challenge you to take a look at your own product development process and see if CF Design can help you create higher quality, more innovative products while saving you time and money in your product development process. Thank you for your time and attention and have a great day.